Uh, hi, I'm Arthur, and this is a change of pace, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I decided it's time for me to look at the weapons of another faction that isn't the Imperium, and just kind of make fun of them for, you know, about 15 minutes or so. I suppose that is a bit of a way to downplay how I actually feel about the Eldar weapons, but hey, we're only about 30 seconds into the video and I can't really swear yet, so. Eldar weapons are a kind of oddity in the setting, where if you never pay attention to them, you'd be forgiven for for not knowing that they have a high degree of similarity to that of the Imperial weapons that are their counterparts. They have a lot of the same categories of gun and sword, so it's interesting to see the differences and the difference in mechanisms involved with them. It's probably just a remnant of the prior editions, you catch my drift? Like, they wanted to have chain swords be a standardized weapon between all factions that were out at the time, so that you could have something similar to what Warhammer Fantasy was at the time, where a sword, an axe, and a club were basically the same weapon. They were considered a hand weapon. So having a chain sword be the standardized thing for each individual faction could be kind of the same. But they also have similar categories like power weapons, melta weapons, flamer weapons, etc, etc. So it is cool, I will admit, and some of these weapons are actually kind of interesting. So I'll break them down into smaller categories and go from there. So starting up, let's just cover the melee weapons and then go from there. As I mentioned before, on the chain weapon side of things, they have a lot of the same stuff that the Imperium has, or at least they have an analog to it. So you have your chain swords, which are your standard weapon of choice for melee combatants, similar construction to that of the Imperial one, albeit fitted for tinier hands. It's a chainsaw sword, it can slice through meat and light armor, but has trouble getting through thicker stuff. Then you have the melee specialist chain weapons, which are exclusive mostly to the striking scorpion aspect, warriors. You have the chain saber, which is a more graceful weapon but requires more skill to use and is usually paired with a second saber. Think of them as short swords. You have the biting blade, which is essentially the Eldar equivalent of the eviscerator, sacrificing speed and grace for guts approved giant chain sword. And after that we have the power weapons. But let's wrap up the striking scorpion stuff first. As melee specialists, they have access to a bunch of different weapons, and one of the more unique ones is the Scorpion's Claw. It's not exactly a graceful weapon, but it does rip through armor pretty well. I think it functions similar to, like, the Jaws of Life, but quicker. It also has a wrist-mounted shuriken catapult, which is neat, and we'll cover shuriken weapons a lot later. The fun thing about power weapons for the Eldar is actually that they are powered by spirit stones containing the spirits of dead Eldar, which is metal as all hell, and I think makes them more dangerous. I'm going to lump a few of them together, because it looks like there is no standardization, so an Eldar power sword, a dire sword, and an avenging sword are basically all the same thing with varying levels of craftsmanship. Think of it how you would see a power sword for the Imperium, and then a mastercrafted power sword, and then maybe a named power sword. They are all powered by the spirit stone of a prior warrior, and for the Dire Sword, it is actually listed on the wiki that if it connects with your body, the ghost inside the stone will try and destroy your mind or soul or whatever, which is actually kind of metal. I like that. Also, shout out to the Ghost Sword and the Ghost Glaive, which are the sized up versions of the Power Sword used for Wraith Constructs. So, great weapons in the hands of normal Eldar, but in the hands of Wraith Constructs, they're just like normal swords or short swords. Then you have the Executioner Power Glaive, the Power Spear, and the Star Glaive, which, again, occupy the same niche as a Power Lance of some sort. That the only major distinction is the level of craftsmanship and the designed purpose of it for whichever unit it is. See, the Star Glaive is essentially a mastercrafted Eldar Power Lance used by only Autarchs. The regular lance is used by troops, and the Executioner Lance is used by melee shock troops known as Howling Banshees. Speaking of, the Banshees also have a unique style of power sword known simply as a mirror sword. Think of it as a power short sword which is tended to be dual wielded or used in tandem with another weapon. Oh, they also have this like thing called the Triskele which is basically just a demon wind shuriken that's powered with a spirit stone and apparently it comes back which is cool but those are 
that's that's weeb as hell. That is super weeby. The forest weapons of the Eldar are pretty easy to understand if you can understand the forest weapons of the Imperium of Mankind. Like the Witch Staff, the Witch Blade, and the Singing Spear. They are basically the Eldar equivalent of the forest weapons that the Imperium has. So just do with that what you will. I don't really have to explain it too much. You basically channel your psychic might into the weapons and they get better because of it. So Eldar tech might be better than Imperial tech, but it's still basically the same template. On to the basic ranged weapons. So these are going to be the stuff that standard infantrymen would use. Nothing too, too heavy. So missile launchers and whatnot we'll cover in the heavy weapons section with the vehicle weapons, but this is just standard stuff that you'd see on the standard infantrymen of the Eldar armies. Starting off, you can't really discuss the Eldar without discussing their love of something called a shuriken catapult. Basically, it takes a cylinder of of weird glass crystal and then shaves off a monomolecular thin disc of it and fires it like a railgun which is cool it kind of functions similar in principle to that of the firearms from mass effect where they functionally will never run out of ammunition in a firefight even if it takes days so the various categories of shuriken catapult can be summed up as normal pistol and the avenger variant used for the dire avenger aspect warriors basically just a better version that fires more efficiently they all do basically the same thing with mildly different purposes sure there are modified versions and non-standard versions like the twin shuriken pistol but it's not that complicated to kind of figure out that they all have the same function you have the eldar melta and heat based weapons like flamers fusion guns fusion pistols and whatnot that occupy the anti-tank and anti-infantry side of things. Firstly, with the fusion guns, they fire out a blast as hot as the sun, which is mostly just caused by nuclear fusion. But then you also have something called the fire pike, which does the same thing, but at a very long distance. A long neck sun gun, if you will. And the flamers for the Eldar basically function the same thing as regular flamers for the Imperium. Their mode of fire is just some wacky sci-fi nonsense, rather than super napalm like the Imperium uses. Comically enough, they use a lot of laser weapons, similar to that of the humble Imperial Guards. Basic stuff like a LAS blaster, a long rifle, fire lasers at a decent range, and can be pretty deadly if need be. Side note, you also have the Sun Rifle, which works similar to that of a Hotshot LAS for the more elite troopers of the Imperium. Basically, with a higher velocity and volume of fire all at once to burn through things a lot quicker. But where it gets interesting is the prism weapons. Now, when we hit the heavy weapons section, you'll see more of these, but prism weapons fire lasers that are in fact amplified by a crystal-like prism inside of the weapon, making them effectively anti-tank weapons. And to be honest, it kind of sounds like a LAS cannon, but with more steps. It's probably significantly more efficient, and it's specifically stated in the lore that Imperial attempts to try and study the technology behind it have all failed, so I could just be speaking up my ass right right now. Lastly, I want to bring up the laser lance, which is a laser firing lance, as you could probably have figured out on your own. But it's also a melee weapon that does some wacky shit. Used by the jet bike riding shining spears, it's pretty effective as a shock weapon and used to great effect by the shining spears. Next up, just some weapons that I couldn't fit in the prior categories, but are still used by infantry. Haywire launchers, which are basically just an EMP grenade launcher that can destroy the internal mechanisms of most machines, or at least stun them for a short period of time. And one of the more interesting weapon categories we start to see here, but is used more heavily on the heavy weapons, is the death spinners, which are basically used by only the warp spider aspect warriors. They fire a cloud of monomolecular thin wires that are almost indestructible that come off as a gray cloud and if you walk into it you are basically shredded to pieces by the razor edged wires and I think that's pretty interesting. It's especially dangerous and even armored targets have a hard time dealing with them because they get through the soft seals and the weaknesses of armor pretty quickly almost like a, a flamer by other means. Alright last category bros we're covering heavy weapons. This is stuff mounted on vehicles, stuff mounted on turrets and just heavy infantry weapons that need a specialist to fire. Breaking it down into categories like we have been so far, laser weapons first. The Bright Lance is the actual equivalent of a LAS cannon for the Imperium, where it's a pretty decent anti-tank weapon mounted mostly on heavy machinery. It can burn holes through most heavy armor, 
Um, it also is incredibly dangerous to use, so they usually have to equip it to a larger tank. In terms of laser weapons, there is also a subcategory of weapon known as a pulsar, which is used exclusively on titans. It's basically a bright lance, but sized up with varying degrees of purpose. Prism cannon? Like we discussed before, is the cannon they attach to tanks to use in tank warfare. It's a dangerous supercharged guided laser blast that is actually a little funky. I like it. Maybe I just like fire prisms, though, by design. Pulse laser is next, and it is basically just a rapid fire high caliber. Well, can you even call a laser high caliber? I guess not. I just, I just don't know really know how to describe the concept of just bigger laser without sounding like an absolute moron. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, we don't really have laser technology, so I guess you could make up a term like lumens or just discuss how like the iris of the laser blaster is just wider. But like, I feel like the concept of laser technology is not expanded upon so much that like. I, we don't have a word for it. We don't have a word to describe thicker laser beams without sounding like we're just making it up as we go. So yeah, it's just, it's just weird that they describe it as like a bigger laser when wouldn't a smaller laser be just as, man, I'm getting lost in the weeds here. Let's get, what, what's next? D weapons? Yeah, let's talk about D weapons. D-weapons are kind of especially dangerous. D-weapons are only allowed most of the times to be used by wraith constructs. Is what they do is in small pockets the weapon is pointed at can rip holes in real space to the warp. It then mends that hole back up. Using this weapon it can actually destroy most things pretty easily. Lightly armored, heavily armored, it doesn't really matter. The warp will pretty much kill anything that's involved or destroy it. It's especially dangerous to use because, you know, opening holes to the warp willy-nilly are kind of bad. There are missile launchers of various sizes, and I'm not gonna sum them all up because they're basically just the same thing over and over again, just for different things. Like, there's the Sunfire missile launcher, there's another type of missile launcher uh, put on like a fire prism. They all have the same function, they all do the same thing. The main ones that I want to talk about are actually the Reaper launchers. Used by the Dark Reaper Aspect Warriors, they are dangerous to say the least. They have a variant that is a drum mag version, which is insane for a missile launcher. The main difference is actually tied to the Aspect Warriors themselves. Essentially, the Dark Reapers can see from the viewpoint of the barrel of their weapon, and because of that, their level of accuracy is almost perfect. To put that in tabletop terms, I don't know what they are right now, but in prior editions, you couldn't actually modify their ballistic skill. They always hit on threes, so that was kind of interesting, especially with the drum mag version. Then you also have the further modified version, known as a Tempest Launcher, which is just the same thing, but instead of firing like a big missile or two big missiles at a time, it fires an entire swarm of small clusters of missiles, which is insanely dangerous. You have several modified versions of the Doom Spinner, like I mentioned before, which is the weapon for the Warp Spiders, but they all do essentially the same thing with greater gusto and create larger clouds of that thin monomolecular wire that rip things to pieces. These are tank-mounted weapons and also titan-mounted weapons. So you have the Death Shroud Cannon, which does the same thing. The Doom Weaver is a, a tank-mounted version, which does the same thing, but it's also a mortar variant where it aims up and has a greater range. We cannot, of course, miss the shuriken weapons, where they are again just the same thing as a shuriken catapult, but bigger with the shuriken cannon. Usually mounted atop fire prisms, they're really useful. Lastly, we have the bits and bobs, like the plasma cannon style weapons the Eldar have, the star cannon and the sun cannon, which, wait, those are, that's the same thing. The sun is a star. I, I know I have a history of being pedantic, but like, okay, cool, it doesn't bother me. Man, I am on some ADHD shit today. I don't know what's up with me. The main thing to know about these plasma weapons is they are actually safe. They heat up, but they never explode like Imperial Plasma Tech. And last, but certainly not least, is the sonic weapons of the Eldar. They are rare, but they do occur. They have the Vibro Cannon, which is just a turn-mounted sound gun that can rip things to pieces, and I like to headcanon it as the Fart Reverb, and the Sonic Lance, which is on one of the supermassive tanks known as the Lynx. Same thing, 
but basically can rip buildings in half instead of just people. They just fire a really damn loud sound and shake you to pieces, so there's not much to really know there. The technology is kind of sci-fi garbage, but you know. And that is more or less every mainstay Eldar weapon that is used by Craftworld Eldar. They are kind of bland, but also have interesting bits to them that I think make them kind of fun. Is my opinion changing on the Eldar? Maybe. I think story-wise and personality-wise, I don't like the majority of Eldar, but the more that I read into them, the more that I'm starting to smooth out my opinion. I'm still not the biggest fan of them, but I think their technology is very interesting. I like the monofilament wire weapons, because that's a very fun concept, because I don't think any non-Eldar faction has stuff like that, but my main criticism of the armory is a lot of the weapons can be summed up as gun. Gun but bigger. Gun but bigger and used for tanks. Biggest version of gun used by titans. Which isn't that bad because the Imperium does it as well, but it is a bit samey when I have to condense so many weapons under a similar bracket. What do you think about the Eldar weapons? And also, what faction do you think I should cover next in terms of the armory? I have a few options, but I want to know what you guys want, because everything's open. If you want me to cover orcs or Tyranid bioweapons, I'll do it. I just want to know what you guys like. Special thanks to my channel members for supporting me, and if you want to support me as well as gain access to additional content, then become a channel member today. Also, like, check out my merch, because it's really cool. Thanks once again for watching, and until next time.